Good morning, everyone. I, it's morning here anyways. It's 8.30. I'm in Utah. Um, I'm not sure where you're at. It could be getting towards the end of your morning already, almost into lunchtime. We wanted to spend 15 minutes today to talk a little bit about fluid onboarding um, for employees. This session that I'm going to go through, we've done a full one-hour session um, before on just this content. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit quick. We're going to hit the highlights of this session. Uh, if you would like more details, there is a link to the full session that's recorded on the Gideon Taylor YouTube channel. So Scott will po post the link to that in the chat so you can access it. In this session, uh, we're going to talk about some of the hurdles that you may have faced if you've tried to implement onboarding or more commonly, most of our clients get very discouraged in just thinking about onboarding because there's some common trends that we always see and it can become very daunting to try to overcome and implement onboarding because some of these hurdles that we'll go through today. So we'll talk a little bit about pre-boarding, integrating your administrative processing into that uh, full process, onboarding, which is what we call when the employees actually started after their first day, and then some new hire stuff, which might come in after the first day, um, it might come in 30 days later and those types of things. We might talk a little bit about admin tools depending on the time that we have. So we'll start by taking a look at the sample onboarding process. This is something that we mapped out with one of our clients. Uh, it started off by them saying, you know, we have these four really basic forms. This will be a super easy onboarding. We just need to implement it in the PeopleSoft onboarding template. So <laughs> spoiler alert, it didn't actually end up being that very simple basic once we mapped it all out for them. This is what it ended up being. Um, we'll take a look at each of these steps kind of briefly, but just to point out, these are all the things that we need to have happen once a person comes from the applicant tracking system before we even know, are they a current employee? Are they a rehire? Um, do they have an ample ID within our system? Because maybe um, they were just a person of interest. Maybe they're coming in as a student, so they already have the ample ID. So all of these things come in before we can even decide, do we give them a new user profile? Do we map them to an existing login account? And then these are the things that happen once we know who they are and we've created a user profile and they're logging into PeopleSoft. So the parts of onboarding, again, we'll talk about pre-boarding, onboarding, new hire, and then that administrative processing that just happens throughout the form. So in starting with pre-boarding, that's this very first half of the chart that we looked at. So it starts off with someone being set to ready to hire within your applicant tracking system. You might use PeopleSoft, but more often our clients are using an external applicant tracking system. So the first hurdle that we face is that continuity problem. So um, I'm going to skip, skip some of the details here, but essentially uh, what we help our clients do is implement an integration between the applicant tracking system and the onboarding process, the activity guide within PeopleSoft, so that it will automatically launch that instance. So it's not a manual step. They set the person to ready to hire in the applicant tracking system, and then it's go going to kick off an email to the person saying, hey, welcome to the organization, and this is what we need you to do. The next common problem that people face is the chicken and the egg problem. Now, this is where we know that we want to hire you, but in our applicant tracking system, we don't know your social security number and we don't know your date of birth. And most of the times we don't want to know that in our applicant tracking system for legal reasons. So we need a way to get the employee to provide that information to us in a secure way so we can then do a search match. Uh, so the solution that we implement here is a quick form um, using the GTE form platform we built out a personal data form where once we get the person into the system using an authentication token, so it's through a guest portal, um, they're coming in because we know that they were the applicant that got hired, and then they're going to provide us with some basic information so that we can do that search match. So there's a form, they enter their social security number, 
they enter their date of birth. We can send out some email notifications at that point for retirement purposes if they're a rehire and also for background check and drug screening so those processes can get started. The great thing about the employee providing us this information is we can automate that search match and most of the time we can determine is this person a new employee or are they a rehire and then maybe about 15-20% of the time there's this fuzzy match that can fall out so we can get people into the system. Once we determine for sure whether it's a, a rehire, a new hire, this gate will open up for the employee and then they're able to go in and create their, their official user profile and get logged into PeopleSoft. And we'll take a look at a video of this as well um, as we get through here. So this is that a video of example of that very first process. So the hiring manager is going to set the applicant to ready to hire. Once they do that, the process passes the data from the applicant tracking system into PeopleSoft. The employee gets this welcome email and has a link with an embedded authentication token inside of it. So once they click on the link, they go straight into this activity guide. They can view a video that says, you know, hey, we're so excited you can join us. Then they can enter their data into that personal data form so that at this point we can determine before we assign them a new user profile or before we assign them an Emple ID, uh, are you an employee or not? You can see this is a very basic form. We populated it with data coming in from the applicant tracking system. So they enter any new data like social security date of birth. They can make changes if they had any typos in the applicant tracking system um, so that it's updated and fed into the system correctly. At this point in the video, this would be if it was a fuzzy match, the employee would then get information that says, hey, you know, your profile is being created, but it might be a minute. We'll email you as soon as that's resolved. Uh, once that's resolved and, and an administrator looked at it and made a determination, then they'll get an email that says, hey, your profile's been created, go ahead and proceed. They can see their Emple ID within the system here. And now is when they can move forward to the secure login. So this is where we go from that pre-hire phase into the actual onboarding phase. This client used it, um, a system for a duo to get logged in, so it took them to an external site. They completed all their duo stuff. And then once they finish that, they have this button that says proceed to onboarding. And then that opens up a new activity guide because now they're, they'll be logged into the system. We've mapped their pre-boarding into the onboarding and it takes them right in. So we'll pick up on that video in just a moment here as well. So if you're thinking, wait, that didn't look like PeopleSoft, um, that kind of, kind of was a little bit yellow, gold-ish. Um, this is one of the other problems. I like the look, I personally like the look of Fluid. Um, I like the white space, but there's often this need to just brand it, especially for people coming into the organization. You want it to look just like your website. And so there is the opportunity to do some branding on the activity guides, like you can see from the, the golden turquoise that showed up on the screen. Um, the next thing, so this is the first impression problem is just doing the branding, making sure that there's a custom homepage tile for you to click on and getting into the system. The next thing we'll talk about is um, the administrative processing. So in addition to marking the employee as hired and then the employee has these tasks to do, there's often also this higher paperwork that needs to be done um, because we need to follow up and match the employee to their job data or to the position number and indicate what the salary was and things like that. So the other thing that happens in conjunction with going through the onboarding process is we're kicking off this automated uh, EPATH hire form that lands in the hiring manager's queue. And the whole time while uh, the employees finishing their pre-boarding and onboarding, this administrative form for the hire process can go along in sync with that. So that takes us into the onboarding step, which is that second half of the chart that we looked at here. The top row is the forms that they actually needed the person to complete. So this is where those four basic forms came from. 
And this is where we hit the cart before the horse problem because the hire form is still in process. So the person might not yet have job data. So what we did here is we implemented some GTE forms on top of things like the direct deposit and the W-4 to act as a holding place. And then we just hold those until the employee has a job data record so we can update the official PeopleSoft pages. And now uh, we're going to pick up here at the proceed to onboarding step. So you can take a look and see what it looks like once the employee clicks on that proceed to onboarding link here. Uh, so this is their new activity guide that we've launched into. They're actually authenticated as themselves. You can see up at the top their employee IDs there and their user profile. And these are some of the forms that you can see. So the direct deposit is a GTE form. Uh, they can enter all of their direct deposit information and then it will get updated into the system. There are some delivered PeopleSoft self-service forms within here as well, links out to a system using the acknowledgement framework so they can go read something, come back into the activity guide and then indicate that they did in fact read that. And you'll see over on the left, as someone completes a step, it will mark that step as completed, visited, um, and you can create dependencies throughout the activity guide as well. There's a summary page where people can go in and see any due dates, date things, dates that things get completed on. Uh, so they can leave the system, come back and log in at any time, and then complete what they need to. And then just following up on the, the hire form, right now our hire form, while the employee is in there completing all of these steps, we have this hire form that routes to a first approver, a second approver, um, and then it gets to this point where we know, oh, we want to wait until the I-9 is completed before it goes to HR. So it will sit out in a queue, it will wait until the employee and the manager complete their part of the I-9 and so that it can move forward. Um, into the system and go to HR to say, okay, you have your hire paperwork, you have your I-9, uh, you can go ahead and do your part. And then the other place where we have a queue that waits is after the direct deposit and the W-4, see that the, the actual EMPL ID has been created and the EMPL record has been assigned in job data, then it'll go ahead and say, okay, now you can write all of that data into the official PeopleSoft screens. And um, just to note that there were custom steps in here. So the solution that we used uh, for this was that we created quick GTE forms using configuration where you can plug in those fluid pages to accomplish things like the intellectual property agreement. And we even implemented department specific steps. So within the activity guide, you can't have conditional steps. The conditional behavior is at the template level, um, but you can create pages that launch that behave conditionally based on the department that the person was assigned to. And um, there's one more quick video here. This is just gonna show you a little bit of the delivered functionality in PeopleSoft that has been tied into the onboarding activity guide. This is the acknowledgement framework. They're very quick to set up, uh, you put some verbiage on the page, the person can check the box and agree. Alternatively, you can have them log into the system again, and then that provides the date time stamp that the person agreed to it. On the document side of things, you have three options to configure. You can say the employee has to take no action, they need to acknowledge it, or they need to upload something back to you. So if they download it, it will just mark it as completed on the first one. On the second one, once they download that document, then the acknowledgement button will show up at the bottom and they also have to push acknowledge. And then on the third one, once they download it, then a button will show up where they have to upload a document to return it back to you. And you can organize those in groups as well. And I think, Scott, that's the end of my 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> very quick overview, uh, but there is the link to the full demo of this uh, in the comments section, I believe. Um, and I will hand it over to you, Scott, to wrap things up. Sounds good. So you, now you can take a breath. Thanks for the uh, <laughs> quick summation, Lynette. Yeah. 
Um, an hour, cramming an hour worth of content to 15 minutes. <laughs>